Welcome back to uh, Eurochat. We're joined tonight by Dr. Alvi. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Steve. We just finished a great conversation about HIFU as it relates to prostate cancer and prostate cancer treatments. Now we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction. If you don't mind, Dr. Alvi, can you give us a general overview of erectile dysfunction, what it is, what it isn't, and how it affects men and their quality of life? Sure. So erectile dysfunction is basically inability to have an erection. So either you have difficulty in initiating an erection or maintaining an erection. And we start, we have, we are seeing patients more and more in their late 40s, mid 40s, all the way up to 80s. And, uh, and you know, we see more and more patients who are diabetics or patients who have prostate cancer and they have treatments such as surgery or radiation. And then they can have difficulty in having erection. Uh, patients who are hypertensive for a long period of time and they develop peripheral vascular disease, they can develop erectile dysfunction. Uh, patients who are um, cardiovascular disease is one of the early signs for erectile dysfunction. So, um, yeah, so anybody who has difficulty in initiating or maintaining an erection, um, you know, we see uh, a lot. And, um, and then there, you know, there, we do some investigation for erectile dysfunction as well. Um, to find out if there's any underlying conditions such as diabetes or prostate cancer, or we sometimes you can have uh, psychological, uh, you know, effects uh, in, uh, in in younger uh, teenagers. Sometimes in patients in their 30s and 40s as well. So we have to rule those out. Um, so yeah, so there's a variety of causes for erectile dysfunction, um, and uh, it's a very common condition, and. Um, men who are more than 55 years old, about 50% of the men have some degree of erectile dysfunction. So it's a very common problem um, and awareness is very important and a lot of patients are undertreated for this. One thing I learned during, during, uh, during, di during this show, by doing this show, is that erectile dysfunction can be a medical, um, a serious medical issue. Um, can you speak to us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so you know, erectile dysfunction for a man is a very, important things, you know, erection, if they can't have erection, they, it can lead to depression. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, it can be an early sign for cardiovascular disease. So if patient uh, comes with erection and, you know, they're having trouble and they're in their 50s and 60s, uh, I try to check their, you know, if we, and we do the workup, we make sure that their cholesterol panel is okay. So we check their lipid profile, make sure, you know, their cholesterol is not too high, and then which can eventually lead to um, coronary artery disease as well. Um, make sure they don't have any smoking history. Um, so there are multiple factors uh, which can lead to erectile dysfunction and eventually, you know, erectile dysfunction can lead to depression and some other medical problems as well, such as cardiovascular disease. So what are some of the treatment options that you recommend, uh, maybe start from the beginning, uh, early stage, and kind of advance to some of the more complex treatment options? Yeah, so, you know, generally we start with oral medications. Uh, they're called pd 5 inhibitors. And, um, commonly known names are Cialis, Viagra, Levitra. Sure. Um, these are commonly used medications for erectile dysfunction. Um, they all work in a very similar mechanism, but just the duration of these medications is different. For example, Cialis, uh, it takes longer to work. So you take four to six hours before um, the sexual activity and it can last longer as compared to Viagra, which you take two to four hours before the sexual activity um, and but it lasts shorter, so it will act, you know, fast, but it will last less. And there's some serious side effects too, right? I know for me personally, I had a hard time with Viagra and Cialis because I would have you know, extended headaches, um, really bad sinus congestion, and overall, I just felt miserable. Um, is that common as well? Yeah, it's very common. Some patients will complain of facial flushing as well, or headaches, um, congestion, um, and you know, some of the rear. Uh, side effects is uh, prolonged erection or priapism as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so there are definitely side effects. Is, you know, everywhere it's they're different. You know, some people see more with Viagra and some people see more with Cialis. But those are the typical side effects. And the other is sometimes that you can uh, have low blood pressure or hypertension. So when patients are taking these medication, we um, uh, we recommend that you, do, you should not take uh, with uh, uh, hyper anti-hypertensive medication or with Flomax, which is used for BPH because it can significantly drop your blood pressure. Um, there are some contraindications as well uh, so for patients who are taking it for nit you know, angina, nitrates. So uh, they're contraindicating those patients that they should not take any PDA5 inhibitors. That's important to know as well. So yeah. 
All right, so let's say the PD-5s are not an option initially, the Viagra Cialis class. What would be the next step that you would have to offer to men that are suffering from erectile dysfunction? Yeah, so some of the other, um, you know, pathways is we can ask, you know, vacuum erection device is another one uh, where you can create a vacuum with a device and then you can, you know, place a rubber band around the base of the penis and that provides a constriction and, you know, give you erection for a long period of time uh, for the sexual activity. So we try that. Um, that sounds well. painful. Yeah, it's not very natural. I think the biggest complaint patients have is they don't feel very natural with this uh, vacuum erection device. So it's not as popular as uh, PDA5 inhibitors. Um, the other option is also uh, penile injections, uh, which is also a very effective treatment option. Uh, what you do is basically um, you, you know, extend your penis and then you inject uh, this uh, medication, which are typically prostaglandin. It increases the blood flow of the penis and will uh, provide you instant erection within you know, a few minutes, um, which will last uh, you know, for the sexual activity. Um, the issue with the uh, penile injection is that patients uh, uh, feel penile discomfort or pain. So the compliance rate is you know, about 40%. So if I started somebody on penile injections, there's about 40% chance uh, they will stay after a year. 60% of the patients will not be taking injections. Yeah, I tried it one time. Um, I didn't like the initial injection, but then my erection wouldn't go away, and so I ended up in the emergency room. Yeah. And so can you talk to us about that as well, about how that can be a medical emergency? Yes, yeah, so it's called priapism. Um, so basically after oral medication or injection, if you take and your erection lasts for a couple, you know, more than two hours, then we recommend patient to go uh, to emergency room because it can affect your erections long term. So longer the time after four hours goes away, there's a chance that you, you might not get erections back again. So it's very important that a uh, patient goes to the uh, emergency room right away, and then there are treatment options for that. Uh, then we have to evacuate blood from the corpora, those uh, major blood vessels in the penis, uh, so that the erections can go down. Uh, otherwise, uh, it can lead to permanent erectile dysfunction for the patients. Yeah, and then that was a series of additional injections that the doctor used to try to make my erection go down. Yes. Very painful. Um, it's a very painful treatment. Um, sometimes we can, if it's not working, you know, we try to do it in the ER. Uh, otherwise, we have to take patient to the operating room and put them under sedation uh, to get the job done. All right, so we've talked about from the, the PD-5s to the pump to then the injections. Correct. And let's say that either doesn't work or the patient's still not satisfied. Is there another layer of treatment option still available? Yes, yeah, so um, the most effective treatment for erectile dysfunction two period is a penile implant. So penile implant, um, you know, they are of different types. Uh, it's a surgical procedure. That's how we place a penile implant. Um, used to be only, there was, you know, metallic implants or malleables we used to call them but now we have inflatable penile implants. Um, they are two-piece and three-piece, which means you have a, one pump which goes in the scrotum, and the cylinders goes inside those major blood vessels in the corporal cavities, and then you can use that pump to inflate, and you will get a full erection. Um, and the three-piece one also has a reservoir which goes in the abdomen. It carries the fluid which goes back and forth between the cylinders to the reservoir. So the penile implant, the idea is that uh, you can have erection whenever you want, as long as you want. And once you are done with the sexual activity, uh, there's a knob on the top of the pump, you can squeeze that and it brings the erection down. So in penile implants, I would say, have been um, in urology for more than 40 years, uh, but there are very few people who take interest in prosthetics and they will do implants, but uh, we consider it as a last option for the patient if they have tried PD-5 inhibitors, they have tried, um, you know, injections or vacuum erection device and nothing is working for them, uh, but it is a very effective treatment option. So more than 95% uh, uh, patient satisfaction. Wow, that's and, extremely high. Yeah, and more than 96% uh, partner satisfaction, so very high satisfaction rates, and this is literature proven. The, um, the pump, is that attached to the testicle or adjacent to the testicle, is that correct? Yeah, so the pump sits in between the testicles. So there are two approaches typically we use. Uh, we make either infrapubic approach where we make a small incision uh, below the belly button or in the scrotal area. So we can use either approach. And the pump sits in between the testicles, so easy for the patient to reach. It's in a dependent portion of the scrotum. And so they can use inflate easily and deflate easily. Um, like we talked about with HIFU, um, pros and cons. So 
with, with this device. Um, sounds like some of the pros are that it's instantaneous, um, it works really well, high patient satisfaction. Any cons that we've seen or any negative aspects to it? Yeah, so you know, as I mentioned, it's, it's a last resort for the patient. So yeah. once you put the implant in, you're basically putting in the corporal cavities. So if you remove the implant, patient will not have any erection. So when we, it's very important to educate the patient that consider as a last resort, it is very effective. Um, so, uh, so when we put the implant in, we tell the patient that, you know, if we remove the implant, you're not gonna have erection most likely. So that's one. Um, the risk of infection is quite low. It's uh, less than 3% after a penile implant. Uh, the average lifespan is about eight to 10 years or more. So, um, so it should last you for quite some time. It's a great runway. Yeah, and if there's any malfunctioning, you can replace that part or you can replace the whole uh, device with a new one. Okay. Um, and you know, the typical side of you know, risk factors are pain, risk of infection, um, and uh, infection. Basically, those are the main ones, I would say. Some patients complain that, you know, penile shortening, uh, which actually is not anything, it's just the corporal length is not that goes all the way to the tip of the penis. So patients would complain that, oh, my penis might be shortened. So it's important that education is the key in a penile, you know, penile implant. Then when you are educating them about a penile implant, you should tell them and you should have a, you know, make them feel it, how it feels and also uh, teach them that, you know, how are they gonna feel afterwards? So a lot of education goes into it. Gotcha, so if the patient has an erection at six inches for, for just for argument's sake, but this is only device only goes, let's say for four inches, they may have a delta of two inches, so there's gonna be, is that what basically happens is it's just, if they have a, a larger erection, they're gonna have not quite the same erection? So I think the important thing goes is, you know, patients are used to the repair for erection, let's say if they had you know, radiation for their prostate cancer or surgery, sure. but they haven't had erection for years. What happens is you, there's, there's a, this phenomenon called shrinkage. Mm -hmm. So you start losing penile length with period of time. So, and the uh, procedures too, right? Prostatectomy. Prostatectomy reduces, reduces the length as well. Yes. So it, you might not have the same length which you had before. So gotcha. typically we measure the size, you know, so when we put oh, that- it is adjustable then? It is based on, yeah, so it comes in different sizes. Wow. We measure the corporal length, and then based on the patient size, we place the implant. So we try to you know, maximize the length as much as we can based on the, so it's, th there's no shortening of the penal length. Very custom, that's-, that's Yeah, really it is, it is based on the patient's size and girth and everything else. Um, what if the patient has a, a curvature of the penis? Um, will that be impacted by this device, or can this device actually help reverse that, if you will? Yeah, so good question. So Peron, it's called Peroni's disease, um, you, know, like, you know, curvature of the penis. So if you have a, early stages of Peroni's disease, it's actually a treatment for Peroni's disease. Mm -hmm. That patients who have underlying erectile dysfunction as well as Peroni's disease, uh, placing an implant actually will prevent the curvature to get worse. And during the procedure, we can actually correct some of the curvature as well. We can do some penile modeling, so we can straighten the penis. So it is actually a good treatment after the patients who are dealing with erectile dysfunction at the same time with Peroni's disease. Uh, penile process is probably the most effective treatment option for that. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, Dr. Alvey, thank you again for your time. Um, where can patients reach out and contact you if they want more information about any of these treatment options? Yes, yeah, so they can reach us at azurologicsurgeons.com. They can go on my website and get all the information about erectile dysfunction as well as they can contact us and happy to provide them information as well. Thank you, Dr. Alvi. And you want to stay tuned in our next segment. We're going to talk about urinary incontinence, a topic that is, is very difficult to speak about but affects a lot of men.